Hi everyone, this is Peyton Hatch. Today I'm going to cover, cover some of the newer abilities inside of Infinity 4.0. I've got the release notes here and I'm not going to cover every single one of these new tools. I would say go in and download them and then try them out yourself. Uh, but essentially the updates included a new registration tool that accepts RTC and BLK data. A uh, big one is the new AP20 poll support which I will do another video in later. Today, I'm going to cover the new dense point cloud filter. So essentially a new noise reduction filter. It's not perfect, but it does work. I will not be covering the import measure to align, but that is a new build ability that I'm happy for. Uh, the report that it was in Captivate will now come over into Infinity. This is the big one, the transform local grid to grid. This is a tool that we had in LGO that we will now have that we now have full capabilities in Infinity, and I'm very happy to to show this today as be the key component of today's video. So here we have Infinity. Now, I went out and I took some total station data. Now, this is really simple job, just some line work. I had one single setup, collected these shots, and then I also did some GPS data with the GS18i, where I did other GPS shots, we'll say along this side of the, of the driveway. And it was, I did some image groups that I then post processed into a point cloud to show off the new filter. Now I should have done a before and after, but I didn't, because you can still see there is some noise here. In the imaging settings, there's this new checkbox, noise reduction used to remove inconsistent points. And when I process this without that filter, I mean, I had data all over the place up here. You know, the sun was kind of right here over the edge of the building. So I had quite a bit of noise. When I use that filter, I'd say it's maybe an eighth of the amount of noise that I had before. So it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. I'm, I'm happy with what that put together, particularly here on the road, on the, on the driveway. It did an amazing job picking up the, uh, particularly this, you know, this drain, drain culvert underneath the driveway. Very happy with how that picked up and just the smoothness and cleanliness of the data. So to process that data, we'll do another video. All righty, so go back here to a 2D view. One little tool that they didn't tell you about is the ability to adjust your PPMs from total station data. Now I went out with GPS and I shot everything in state plane. So technically everything from my robot, which I'll turn on my TPS processing, TPS observations, so you can see where my total station was shooting out. A robot shoots at a scale of one. And so if I'm trying to go to state plane, I should be scaling all of those shots down, you know, like a 0.999 scale factor in order to put those points on grid. I didn't do that in the field. So technically every one of those shots is gonna be off a little bit if you're going true grid to ground or ground to grid. So in the past, if you wanted to then scale those after the fact, because a lot of the times our field guys, we don't wanna do that. You would need to open up the source and click on each individual setup. So if they set up say six times, you would see six different setups and you would right click on them and go edit geometric PPMs or atmospheric PPMs. So we'll just do the geometric PPMs and I would set it to coordinate system. And so based off of the setup location and based off of the coordinate system attached, it would automatically create the PPM projection at our correction. And you just press okay and it would scale everything. Uh, the new way you can do it, it's a little faster because instead of having to open up each individual one, you can go to your TPS tab, do a select all, right click, geometric trick PPMs, and press OK here. And it does them all. 28 objects affected. So I didn't do a whole lot, but those have now all been uh, technically scaled down to grid, even though they were total station shots. And they'll move very low, very small, but they have slightly been moved. All right. Now, let's take this to ground and go here to our inspector, show this off first. 
set this coordinate system to none to show this true effect. None. Okay, so. All right, so to kind of iterate what's going on, if I set a coordinate system to none, you know, total stations, they do not collect data in latitude and longitude. You give it a position, and then based off of distance and angle, it can derive northings and eastings for all of the topo shots. There are no latitude and longitudes, which is technically the opposite of a GPS, which it collects everything in latitude and longitudes. Here are my GPS shots, here are my total station shots. So I have latitude and longitudes here, none right here. I just have northings and eastings. But when I apply a coordinate system, it can essentially uh, take those northings and eastings, and based off of that position and the coordinate system, it can derive what the latitude and longitude is, which is what uh, how a GPS works, just the opposite. GPS collects latitude and longitudes. We apply a coordinate system, and we get northings and eastings for those points. Now, when we go in and we create a new coordinate system, so say I needed to scale this entire thing to ground or go to a just a local projection, uh, that local projection gets applied to the latitude and longitudes, therefore all my GPS data will move, but my total station data will stay right where it is. I'm going to turn off my point cloud data for now to show you. So let's go through it and see it and then show you the easy way now to bring our total station up. So we're here to coordinates. Now I'm going to go to Coordinate System Manager. And I'm going to determine a transformation. Say there's a lot of different ways to create coordinate systems. This is just the way I'm going to do it in this video. Do a quick ground based off of Texas North Central. I'll do from a known point, and I will select. I know point number 100 was roughly the center of my project. So it'll take that coordinate. It'll derive the ground scale factor. If you wanted to know how much that multiplication is, just hit here. So if you take that scale factor, multiply it, you should get about a coordinate that's 729 feet more. That's what it is. So turn that off. Hit Create. And I will call this uh, TXNC Ground. And I will hit Finish. Get a report. Now let's close out of it. So now I have TX and C ground. And as you can see, it has automatically been applied and my GPS data has moved to those new coordinates. My total station data has stayed where it was because when you apply this, it only affects the latitude and longitude. It cannot move total station data up. So let's set it back to Texas North Central. Puts everything back together. Excellent. So in the past, how did we move the total station data? Well, we used to have to open up each individual setup. I have a wizard of a video on this and you would go change the coordinates of the setup. I don't want to do that. So with this new tool, transform local grid to grid. You can see it only brings up the total station data. Now we're going to go from Texas North Central to Texas North Central ground. We'll send all the points over. And what it's done is latitude and longitudes, latitude and longitudes were derived from these northings and eastings based off of Texas North Central. So when you open up this tool, it holds the latitude and longitude and it reapplies the new coordinate system for the total station points therefore giving you a new northing and easting. You see it has changed 700 feet, which is, hey, that was the number that I showed you earlier. Now we press OK. And now our total station data should have moved. There it is. I don't know if it all went. That's just our, oh, it all went together. Sorry, that's what happened. It all went together. Because now you can see Texas North Central Ground has then been reapplied and our GPS data and our total station data have all been moved up to the new coordinate system. That's how easy it is now to move all the total station data. There's the one caveat. Let me turn on the point clouds again. 
they're still down here. Those don't get the latitude and longitude uh, coordinates uh, married to them. So if you're going to then take GS18i data or drone data, you need to process the data after you move it to the new coordinates. That is just something you have to be aware of. Um, so guys, yeah, that's the new tool. So I'm very happy to have this new transform local grid to local grid. It's going to make life a whole lot easier to get that total station data up onto the coordinates with the GPS. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.